Saturday, October the 21st, 2023. It is season 17, uh, episode 35. Sorry, I'm turning my headphones up here, which at the same time is turning up the volume on your stream (laughs) because that's apparently how all this stuff is wired and how it works. So I'm trying to hear myself. Guess I could do it that way. That's a little bit better, but now there we go. Just trying to make it not so it's so loud on your end watching the stream and uh, also loud when I do the video editing later on. So anyway, welcome into the show. If you'd like to get in touch with us, our phone number is 334-272-9228, Check out ingamechat.net for all the links to get in touch with us. You can find us on Twitter at ingamechat. You can find us on Facebook there as well. You can email us, everyone at ingamechat.net. We are streaming right now on Twitch. Go to twitch.tv. And you can uh, Google, not Google, you can search in-game chat there. They have a little search bar at the top. Or you can go to our website, ingamechat.net, and you can go all the way to the bottom of the page, click on the link, takes you right to it, and there you go. Uh, That's Twitch. Discord, of course, is available to you if you would like to use it. Just give us, uh, just go to our website again, ingamechat.net, scroll to the bottom, there's a link to get into our Discord channel and uh, say hello. So, there you go, everything's set. Uh, let's jump into what we've been playing. RJ, you're up first. A whole bunch of the same things, really. You All right. Baseball <laughs> and virtual fighter. But uh, Warframe, uh, there was an update they made on one of the uh, um, frames that, uh, that I had. Uh, Hydroid. They made some uh, big changes to it. They changed his power set. Um, he sounds like a water thing. You'd be right. Hydroid? Hydroid, yeah. You'd okay. Be right. You'd be right on that. Uh, I always like to do that with Pokemon, like to guess, like, hmm, what's their power? When, yeah. Ba- based on name alone. Mm-hmm. A lot of them I can't figure out. But, yeah. 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 But uh, anyway, uh, he was uh, basically labeled as one of the worst frames to have in the have in game. Oh, just really? Did, just didn't have enough, um, just didn't have enough uh, stuff to him compared to the other um, characters available. Yeah. So they made a, a little change to him. They made his uh, water powers uh, corrosive or to set up enemies to be... Oh, so uh, tick damage? Uh, yeah, I guess I guess set up to be more uh, susceptible to corrosive damage. Now. Yeah, so you can hit them, you can damage them once, and then they're they're more susceptible to it. So if you got something corrosive and you add on to it, you just you can probably set them up for some real major nice. uh, tick da- uh, tick damage. That's a good update. Killing. That's a good yeah. way to do that. You have a you have a character whose ability is not doing too great, but here's the ability. Let's see what we can do. Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh, okay, corrosive damage, damage over time, mm-hmm. uh, and so. That's not a bad way to look at it. Yeah, bad I mean, way to uh, go with it. I want to see how it work. I got to see how it works on the uh, other characters because the ones with uh, armor really is one type of enemy. The uh, corpus enemies, they're the ones with the uh, the technology and they got the armor things yeah. like that, and they can do things like that. Or I'm guessing uh, AC Wraith is going to chime in here in a bit. Uh, Grenier has armor. Um, they have armor. I'm trying to notice if they have armor. I think when I think of armor, I think of the corpus uh, shield uh, shields really shields, and they have armor. What else? But uh, yeah, they they basically just made it better. So it's just playing with the powers a lot, really. Mm -hmm. And I have to remember um, playing Warframe to use powers. I'm so focused on the uh, guns and the melee weapons that I barely ever use uh, powers. But if this is uh, updated uh, 
the way they say it is, I'll be using powers a little more often uh, with that character. All right. So we'll see what happens. So just Warframe, anything else? Yeah, more the same in Warframe, really. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Any, I don't know. Did you, did you get the Mortal Kombat one? No, it's on a PS5 only. That's right, it is. I forgot about that. It's yeah. weird. Or PC? It's, it's on PC. Should be. I want to say it is. It's on the Switch, which is also strange. Yeah, because we talked about how, how comical it looks right. on the it's Switch. It's like we're yeah. not putting it on the PlayStation 4 or the, uh, the Xbox One, but we are going to put it on the Nintendo Switch. Mm-hmm. Go figure. Right? Yeah. So. Like, it feels like if you can do it for the Switch, you can do it for the PlayStation 4. And the results definitely show that you can do I it mean, for the yeah, PlayStation totally, 4. I mean, yeah, totally, right? Mm. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I figure they're going to do some updates on that thing to clean it up a little bit. From mm-hmm. what I heard, they will. Yeah. But I don't see why they couldn't have done it for the PlayStation 4. Mm-hmm. Uh, for the previous gen consoles, basically. Well, I feel the, like well, but that was the thing they said they didn't want to do. Uh, I know for pre- previous gen. and I was kind of I was kind of good with that, except when they released it for the Switch and it looked like it did, and I'm like, well, then you guys, why, <laughs> why release it if it's going to look that way? And then secondly, if you could release it for the Switch, why not for the other consoles? Mm-hmm. Um, in fact, there is uh, there's a game we're going to be talking about in the news. That I am still looking forward to, but that I am a little hesitant to jump on the bandwagon at launch. Not a day one purchase, huh? I'm going to wait and see, but I don't know. There's a couple of videos that are going to be coming out today, or at least were scheduled to come out today, but they, mm-hmm. they released a patch mm-hmm. to uh, the the early access players. I say early access, but like the, the streamers and people like that, they released a performance patch uh, just last night. And so some of these guys who were working on benchmark tests and were doing some some comparisons and everything else, mm-hmm. they have to go back and redo everything because they've updated a you know they put a performance patch out, um, and you can guess what game I'm talking about. Those of you who are listening, mm-hmm. um, it's a game I'm looking forward to. It's a type of genre that I really enjoy. It is coming out supposedly next week. Uh, the console dates got pushed back. And now we're kind of figuring out why those console dates got pushed back. I'm going to go into that a little bit later. As far as what I played, uh, I have to say that Sunday I played a ton of demos. The Steam Next Fest was going on, Mm -hmm. so I played a ton of demos. I finished up the Talos Principle 2 demo. What I had told you as far as here's what happens after you get through the usual Talos Principle like puzzle stuff. Yeah, new stuff. Right. I'm going to be interesting. I'm going to be very interested to see how the actual full game plays out, because I think this was a demo built for a demo. In other words, this was uh, something where they said, "Okay, we're only going to have them do these few puzzles, and then we're going to jump straight into this big situation, this big sort of reveal as to, hey, we're going to show them that this isn't the same game." Yeah, this is I'm what wondering you have to look how soon. To. Yeah, I'm yeah. wondering how soon that comes into the story of the actual game. If there's a lot more that we have to play before we get there, or if it's just as fast. But anyway. Um, I'm guessing quick. Probably. Yeah. Uh, especially what I played afterwards. Mm-hmm. What I played afterwards felt like this is the sequel, yeah. you know? Um, first off, the thing looks amazing. I took some screenshots. Things are just beautiful, beautiful game. Um, they're using Unreal 5 uh, for their engine. Mm-hmm. Or were using Unreal Five for their engine. Uh, it's a, it's just a, it's just a an amazing looking game. So when I got past uh, what felt like a narrative hub mm-hmm. type of thing, uh, when I when I got into puzzle solving proper, uh, there were it was interesting. There was a uh, first off the open area that you're in is massive. And I don't mean the hub. I mean the actual puzzle area where you go into, uh, you know, puzzle one, two, three, four, all the way in the thing. That area is just huge. Just huge. Um, a lot of it feeling like it leads to nowhere. You know, it's just massive open space. Uh, it's gated, but it's big. Yeah, I was about to ask you, can you go everywhere in this area? or yeah, You can't go everywhere, okay, no. Yeah. Also, you can't, you can walk in water, but you can't. Uh, you can't do too much of that. You're first off, you're a robot. 
you know, mm-hmm. understand that uh, you're kind of a you're a not a cyborg, you're uh, kind android. of an android. Yeah, 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 a bit of an android. You're you're a robot. Water's bad for you. You can you can walk around in little puddles and shallow whatever. But uh, there was an area where I was just like, oh, I'm gonna go, and there was there was water that I was running in, but mm-mm. they they really were like, that's not how it, you don't want to do that. You can get there by going a long way around, but we don't like you going. We don't like you taking a shortcut through this stuff. So mm. uh, yeah, the, the water is a barrier, but <clears throat> there was just a big it was just a big open space for you to walk around in. Uh, and it was a beautiful looking space. Uh, there were two different ones, but, uh, I was in one area where you had to solve eight puzzles in order to unlock a gate. Uh, you unlock the first four, you get back on this tram thing and it takes you into another area where you play another four and that's your eight. Um, and then when you do that, you construct a bridge, you go to a thing, demo's over. There's no real story involved in that. There's no, there's nothing like when you finish it, they give you a, a story that leaves you on a cliffhanger or whatever. It's just demos over. Um, they introduced, uh, like when I got into this big open space, I saw this, what looked like a fireball type thing just sitting on a pedestal. And I was like, ooh, what's that? And how do I get to it? Um, I figured out how to get to it. Picked it up, and it's it's kind of a freebie that you can hold on to. So if you run into a puzzle that you're just like, I can't figure this out, you can use that to just go ahead and unlock the gate, get the puzzle piece you need. Mm-hmm. You don't actually have to solve it. Uh, I never used it. Uh, there were times I thought I should just to, hey, you know, you're just doing a demo of this. Use the tools that they give you. Mm-hmm. But I, I, I could never do it. I wanted yeah, to figure out. Yeah, I wanted yeah. to figure them out myself. I wonder if that something like that was put in because of the uh, usually something that, usually something like that is put in because of the uh, difficulty people will talk about the puzzles are too difficult and they slow the story down or yeah, things like that. I can't remember if the first game had a uh, mechanic like that. I don't think it did. I doubt it. I don't think it. I, don't I think can't it remember, but like I really don't think it had any kind of a you know use your one freebie to to go through or ever how many you got. Uh, I don't. I don't remember that being a, being the case in the first game. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I was really impressed with the visuals, the way the thing looks. It's just just amazing looking game. Um, there was a part. There was a section there where after I had solved all the puzzles, uh, I had to construct a bridge, mm-hmm. and I don't. I don't know if I want to spoil it for people, but it takes the Tetris blocks that you get. Uh, after you, Every time you solve a room, you get a Tetris-looking puzzle piece. Mm-hmm. I say it's a Tetris piece because they look like those. They look there's like the, Tetris, yeah. There's the L shapes, there's the zigzags, there's the T blocks, there's the squares, yeah. the lines. Yeah, Tetris is world, world, worldwide recognized, so yeah, yeah exactly. you know when you see it. It's, yeah. all of those kind of, it's all of those kind of shapes. So every time you solve a puzzle, you pick up one of these shapes. And normally you're picking them up because you're unlocking a gate at the end. You've solved all these regular room puzzles, and now if you want to progress, you take the shapes that you've collected, and then you have to fill them into what is like a lock. Mm -hmm. And they all have to fit in there. Um, And that unlocks the thing. Well, they've taken that concept and... Three deified it. <laughs> I don't know if I don't know. I'm trying to put that into a non-spoiler area. But as you're collecting these things, you at the beginning of the game you use them to unlock doors. But in the last two sections, or at least the the main demo that I was playing, where you're in this massively open space solving these puzzle areas, once you've done that, you take those pieces and you do something completely different with them in a 3D space that when I finally figured out what I was doing, I thought, oh, wow, this, it was brilliant, but it was also like, man, this is going to throw another wrinkle into puzzle solving. Mm -hmm. Um, Tetris in a 3D space in first person is a little strange. Um, And it's, 
it's cool, it's fine, because, you know, if you mess up, you can always just, you know, you can go back and, and start again. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it was really cool. I'm going to tell you what it was when we take a break. Right. I just don't want to spoil it for everybody else. I know you don't care, but I just don't want to spoil it. <laughs> well, I'm interested, every- though. Yeah, so I'm going to yeah. tell you how it does that when we go to the break. So I played Talos Principle 2. I also played... Oh, what else? Um, did you play more Cyberpunk? I have. I did play a little bit of that Sunday, and then I did play a little bit of that. In fact, this morning I finally made it to the title screen. Okay. Um, and finally, uh, if you want to call it that, I unlocked Keanu Reeves. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you want to, if if that's how you want to, you want to look at it. I'm going to go to my library here because that'll tell me what I have played. Sort by recent. Well, it doesn't show the demos. Hmm. That's uh, that's that's bad. Uh, <laughs> Playtime installed. Let's see, installed. Maybe I can get installed. You're not going to show me demos, are you? Wow, this thing only applies to uh, full uh, full size games. Uh, seemingly. Hmm. That seems to be the case. Odd. Playtime, maybe? Nope. I got way too many things that are that have had more playtime than what I've been doing. That's strange. I wonder, and I know we're doing this on the air, and I'm sorry. Uh, I'm curious if I can go to the website and it does the same thing. I'm logged in, I believe. No, I'm not. Really? Why am I not logged down? Ooh, sign in with a QR code. I can do that. How can I do that? <laughs> Steam Guard. <laughs> ah. There you go. Sign in to Steam. Now it's signing me in on the browser. Ah, love it. I love it when this sort of thing happens. Uh, activity. Let's go to my activity. See what it tells me. Uh My activity. Show me what I got. I'm sorry, we're go nothing. <laughs> ah, gosh. All I just work. wanted to see what I've played. Why didn't wanna whine? Cyberpunk and a bunch of demos. Oh no, here we go. There I got, got it. Ah. Okay. All right. Sky, Children of Light demo. These are the same people who made Flow, Flower. Uh, that game company is the name of them. I want to say Journey as well. Mm. Those guys. This is a lot like Journey. The Sky Children of Light thing. Mm. There's no enemies or anything like that. You are simply exploring and solving very, very minute puzzles at the moment. Mm -hmm. Um, This thing... uh, I'd like to get into it, but there's a certain spot where you get in the demo where the other players start coming in and you start seeing other people controlling their characters doing their thing and the whole thing is every time you solve a puzzle and they're not difficult puzzles basically their puzzles is in just find certain areas on the map that's it they're lit up you can see them you just got to go to them and you can easily you know you light the candle and the thing works or whatever Mm -hmm. every time you do that you earn an emote and the emote is something uh, like pointing over, you know, pointing to a specific place, uh, waving at someone to get their attention, mm-hmm. uh, you know, uh, shaking your head like, nope, don't want to do that. You know, it's just communication. Yeah, communication. You're unlocking emotes. communication with the other people. Sounds like default emotes that you have in uh, games of that nature. Anyway. Mm-hmm. But you unlock yeah. them by doing this. And as you do this, though, you unlock certain abilities of your own character, basically flight. Um, you get longer mm-hmm. flight time and certain different abilities during flight. Also, the more things you unlock, the more doors unlock ahead of you in a level. Mm-hmm. So it was really interesting to see and probably very interesting to play. But uh, I spent 42 minutes in it and was ready to move on after that. I was like, okay, this is a good, I've seen a good chunk of what you offer. I, I'm ready to move on to the next game. Mm-hmm. And that next game was. Uh, American Arcadia. This was cool. And I'm not so sure that American Arcadia isn't something made by the people who... The the group that made Limbo and 
Inside. Inside. Okay, yeah. yeah. Was a duo. One of them went off and made Cocoon, and it feels like the other dude went off and made whatever this is. This feels very, very much like a game from them. Mm-hmm. And I'm trying to remember the name of their studio, but I've completely forgotten. But it's uh, American Arcadia. Really, really cool. If you still have access to get to that demo uh, and you like side scrollers that kind of shift your perspective for a bit, mm-hmm. uh, check out American Arcadia. Is it called uh, Play Dead Studios? Yeah, that is Play Dead Studios. Okay. You're right. Yeah. Um, in fact, I wonder if I can click on this and get a studio name. Well, the only thing I remember about Limbo is uh, Giant Spider. Yeah. Uh, yeah, pretty much it. Yeah, Giant Spider. Yeah, this game comes out November 15th. Uh, I was trying to see on who the developers were. Um, These are some reviews. American Arcadia's Nightmare in Paradise only grows more intriguing. Destructoid said, I have nothing but confidence that Arcadia will be one of the most enjoyable and refreshing interactive narrative experiences of the next few years. Uh, Games Radar says American Arcadia has quickly become one of my most anticipated upcoming indie releases. This is definitely one to watch out for. Um, it's really, really cool. I don't want to spoil anything. Just uh, if the demo is still available, and it is still available, uh, according to this, according to the page I'm on, the demo is still available. Give it a shot. Steam says it's similar to games I've played like Cyberpunk. I don't get that. Uh, but Portal 2 totally get that Mm. um yeah give give that one yeah give that one a look american arcadia was really really cool um i don't really want to say much more about it other than that so yeah Yeah. ac wraith says they still have third person option right for uh talos principle i believe they do um yes they do i do remember that they had that option available i stayed in the first person just because that's how i uh, you know, like to measure my jumps and all these other things. I just stayed in first person, but they do have a third person camera for it. The next game I played was Pioneers of Pagonia. There was a demo for that. It is a city builder. Actually, it's a frontier, frontier builder type thing. Uh, you start with a ship that is docked, and then there's land. And you have to build a road from the ship into the land, and then you start building your sawmill and your uh, you know, lumber yard and your hunter's area and yeah. all these. It's very, it, when, when I say, say frontier, I'm thinking old West. Yeah. I'm, I'm thinking more, go back even further than that. You know, people mm-hmm. who are coming over to the new world for the first time. Um, mm-hmm. so pioneers of Pagonia law cabins. Uh, uh, yeah, very much windmills, things like that. Okay. There's, there looks to be some fantasy element to it and I haven't gotten to that part of it yet. Uh, I was I was frontier inter- magic. Yeah, basically. Yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. I was interested in how First off, they give you no there's no there's no tutorial. There's nothing that's kind of holding your hand saying like, "Hey, welcome to Pioneers of Begonia. Your people are on the ship and they need to get off. Build a road." Well, it's a demo. It is. So maybe not, may not be anything fleshed out in but, the demo, but maybe in the full game. All I knew is that uh, when I tried to get them off the ship, it says there's no road. And so I was like, oh, I have to build a road. So I build the road. Then uh, then it's all these other little things you have access to. Like I mentioned, there's uh, cabins you can build, sawmills. There's uh, uh, a town square, all these things. The interesting part was that I knew I was walled off, and it was a very small space, the borders of what I could do. But the more that I built, I had all these other people off the ship who would push those barriers back so it all kind of opened up the more I built Mm -hmm. so I never really was running out of space that I could tell and the more it opens up the more you have access to oh look there's rock over there so I can build a mining camp Mm -hmm. uh, to where they can work on that and get those materials and there's this whole toolbar up at the top that tells you here's how much lumber you've acquired here's how much uh, uh, minerals you've acquired here's the water here's the happiness of the camp here's the food all this sort of, you know, um, uh, management type system yeah. for resources. What's the format? I mean, how's, uh, what, what, uh, what view is it? Top like, down. Top down? Yeah. So like a city skylines? Very much a city builder. Yeah. 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 Like totally city a city yeah. builder type thing. You're a little bit closer than you are on like city skylines. You're a little bit, uh, the, the, the view camera is 
a lot closer to the ground on well, this one. You're not building skyscrapers, obviously. Yeah, because I'm thinking of uh, city skylines. From what I looked at, you're it's it's huge. You're building and you're building big a cities. massive city. Yeah, big city. So that's why. So yeah. And I have no idea on one's a city. One's a city. One's a village. Yeah, I'm guessing. So yeah, very much like you're. Yeah. You're exactly. That's totally nailing it. Uh, so there's that one, and I'm really interested in it. It it looks really good. I liked it, and if there is a demo, or not a demo, but if there is some sort of like little walkthrough tutorial for your first time, just to get the mechanics of like, okay, here's how it all has to start. You know, mm-hmm. you got to build a road, and then the first thing you should build is this and this. I don't know. It's just you know, I was just going off what I could do and mm-hmm. how I wanted it to look. Um, the other game was I'm going to mispronounce this name, Laika. L A I K A, Leica. So, sounds about right. Yeah, Leica. Aged through blood is the name of it. This is a side scroller, two D, uh, sometimes two and a half D as well. Uh, sometimes you would get like a almost near three D view of it. But basically, you're a fox like thing, <laughs> an anthropomorphic fox, and you ride a motorcycle. Hmm. Um. You're able to kind of direct your motorcycle in the air when you're making jumps and stuff. If mm-hmm. you want to be on the back wheel, the front wheel, that sort of thing. That comes in handy because when you start running into combat, uh, your motorcycle is your shield. It doesn't take damage. Mm-hmm. So when you hit a big jump at an enemy, if they fire at you, you just need to make sure that the bike is in front of you. Mm-hmm. That also helps if you aren't on a big jump and they fire at you. You can turn your bike around by hitting the... Uh, the A or D is what I was using. Now, a contr- like a controller probably would work really cool here, but A and D. So D would go to the right, and A would turn the bike around and go left. Right bumper, left bumper. Yeah, basically. Yeah. So if somebody fires at you, uh, if you can turn your bike, you know, close to the moment of impact, mm-hmm. it reflects the amp- it reflects the bullet back to them. Parry. Yeah, basically. Parry with the bike. Yep. Yeah. Eventually, you earn your own gun. And that becomes... Do you ever play uh, My Friend Pedro? Yeah. Yeah. That becomes a free-moving, you know, you can the, the mouse moves where you want the gun to go. Aim everywhere. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Which is very hard to kind of get your control scheme behind. It's tough. Yeah. Uh, I, it's... That's that's basically my only complaint about that, and I didn't like it much with uh, My Friend Pedro either. I'm trying to think about... Uh... The setup with that would be because left stick would be motion, right stick would probably be aiming with the uh, gun when you earn it. Left trigger, right trigger would probably be the uh, direction you want to go. Mm-hmm. Left bumper, right bumper would probably be uh, some other function concerning um, direction or with the bike. I might plug a controller in and see how it plays. Yeah, the uh, bumpers and trigger for the bikes, and then uh, the face buttons for face buttons and analog sticks for everything else. Yeah, I'm curious if maybe that game is on Game Pass. If it is, I'd, I'd play it there and see how yeah. it goes. I really like some aspects of it. So if you wanted to reload, you had to do a backflip uh, on your... I know, right? If you want to reload your gun, okay. you hit a jump. There's plenty of jumps. You hit a jump and do a backflip, and it reloads your weapon. If there was something... There was some other kind of ability that you had, and if does, you... Does it involve the bike? Yeah. Power sliding? Not power sliding. I think uh, bullet time, maybe. Okay. There's a little thing where you can slow down time, but you can still get the free. Again, very much my friend Pedro, right? Mm -hmm. Um, But you had to, in order to recharge your ability or whatever, you do a front flip. So there's a couple of different ways to do it. So if you want to reload back flip, you want to do whatever front flip. It's like it's like excite bike with handguns. It feel yeah. Trust me, excite bike was exactly the 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 feeling I got when I hit that first jump. It could move my bike back and forth. Yeah, I was like, all right, we're doing excite bike stuff. Okay. Anyway, it was very interesting. I liked the way that it played in a sense that it looked really cool and some of the concept was great. But as soon as they introduced that free uh, that free aim mechanic type thing, I uh, my brain couldn't my mouse. And and my my fingers to move the back and forth and to know what to do was just throwing me off completely. Yeah, I mean the the, the exact same feeling came over me with uh, my friend uh, Pedro. Yeah, because when you were dual wielding and having to jump between oh, levels God. and jump off the yeah. wall, off the wall jump, double uh, split fire between two enemies mm-hmm. uh, who were waiting for you, that type of thing. It 
it's just a matter of practice. To me, it's just a matter of practice, just sitting yeah. down and just doing it over and over again until you get the feel of it. And then when you do get the feel of it, don't don't let it sit for two, three weeks because you'll forget everything. You have to sit down and relearn mm-hmm. all that stuff again. So games like that, you'll you'll forget the uh, muscle memory real quick. Yeah. It's, uh, I loved it, but I really hated that control scheme for it. So anyway, that's what I played. Like I said, Cyberpunk I played. I got finally to the part where uh, Keanu Reeves introduces himself, mm-hmm. and uh, I will play more of that uh, tomorrow as well. And yeah, so that's what I have, uh, that's what I played. That is it. I uh, did not get a lot of gaming done this week at all. Um, so yeah. We're going to come right back with more of in-game chat. I've been on a rant here, so I don't know if anybody's tried to call in at all. But uh, I say a rant. It wasn't a rant. I just ramble like I do. That was, was a bunch of demos. Hey, yeah, it was. It, man. We're going to take a break. We are still in the October months, but all of our music this time comes from the uh, soundtrack that I told you about. And I'm going to try and find that soundtrack uh, somewhere on, let's see, search mail. What was this called? It was Moon. It was High... Is it High Moon? No. What am I? What am I thinking of? We have no idea. I know, but it's spooky. It is. Just looking up Moon. That'll help. Blood Moon. Pale Moon. Here we go. No. It is Scarlet Moon. Mm. Scarlet Moon Halloween Volume Two is what we've got, and our first track. Uh, comes from Banjo-Kazooie, the Mad Monster Mansion music from Banjo-Kazooie. However, this is called the Grand Monster Hotel, and we'll be right back with more of in-game chat right after this. Welcome back to In Game Chat. So the album that I talked about only has six tracks. We have seven that we play. Mm -hmm. So I have to grab one that's not on the thing. I can never I can never not have the saw music. Charlie Clauser, uh, great composer. Love his work with the Saw franchise. So that is from the Saw game, the menu music that plays uh, during that game. Welcome back to the show. Uh, we, or I, actually forgot to do my clapboard thing. Um, just completely forgot, so I'm going to do it now with my hands. There we go. <laughs> so I'll have to time that up whenever I'm doing the uh, the show there. Second segment. 
Yeah. I know. So, yeah. It's, uh, it's going to be. Hey, look, better late than never, man. I know. I know. Um, but yeah, I got to time that up. One day we'll do a perfect show. <laughs> <laughs> it's, only, it's only been, it's only been a decade. It's only, yeah, it's only we'll, been we'll, 10 years. We'll, we'll do it eventually. Over 10 years. 2008? Yeah. Yeah, 2008. Yeah. So, yeah, we got to get it right. So, anyway, uh, let's see. What was I going to talk about? Sorry, I was playing Snap in between commercial breaks there. Uh, well, I'm behind on my bounties that I have to do. I say ba- they don't, they're not bounties. They're just little achievements that you can do that they refresh mm-hmm. every ever many hours. So, yeah. anyway, uh, let's see what we're going to talk about today. I tell you what, let's just go to the phones. Okay. Hey, you're on in-game chat. Who is this? It's Chris. Hey, Chris, what's up, man? It's a house that sound this time. And it's a little bit better. Keep going. Maybe it, maybe it'll maybe it'll be fine. Well, I'm still hearing an echo. I was just going to switch over to Discord and not worry about the phones. That something's still going on. Okay. All right, man. All right. Bye. Bye, bye. That's it. He's going to jump over to Discord real quick. It won't take him long to get in there. Yeah. At least I don't think I need to unmute my Discord. Good Lord, why am I so off on this? What is going on? Habit. I completely and, forgot about the yeah, clapboard, man. And, it's sitting right up there, and I, yeah. I just completely forgot about it. And it's still a mystery to me. How, how is it a local phone call sounds worse than Discord? Well, you can, folks can call from Germany oh, and Discord's, comes in crystal clear. Discord's coming in through the internet, I guess. That yeah. would be the reason, I suppose. Hey, Chris, you there? Hey. There you go. There God, go. it's like he's in the room. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with the phones, or if it's on your end or, or on our I'm end. Almost, who, who I'm almost positive it's us. You know, we have these. We have the. I don't know if there's a problem on this on the station. If there's a technical problem on the station, it's. I feel like it's on our end. Mm. Uh, well, I can tell you. I can tell you on the broadcast on over the phone, the hum was back, and and it only showed up whenever you started talking. If you or if you weren't saying nothing, the hum was gone. So oh. who knows? All right, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. Who knows? Anyway, what y'all been doing, huh? Uh, just playing games, man. What have you been doing? <laughs> Same thing. Okay. Uh, been, been watching some Japanese anime shows on uh, the Crunchyroll app, and since I've got a subscription to that, I've been watching a few of those. It's pretty new. And then uh, I looked at the sale and found one of uh, the role-playing games I had a collector's edition of that I hadn't opened. It's basically it's a, it's a challenge uh, role playing game called Sword and Fairy Together Forever, and they had it on sale for like fifty percent off. It's like twenty bucks, and I said, "Shoot, I'll just go ahead and buy it digitally and just leave the the, uh, the, the collector's edition sealed." Yeah. Um, have you said have you uh, seen the price of it? Uh, what it's worth? I think it's uh, the collector's edition's right around a hundred bucks or so. So I want to just you know just leave it as it is. Mm-hmm. Keep it as it is right now. Yeah, probably a few years down the line, it'll be ridiculously priced on uh, eBay. You know, people talk about the price yeah. price of being ridiculous, but hey, no, it's not ridiculous. Someone's willing to pay that much. To, someone's out there is willing to pay that much to have it. So yeah, that's the demand. There you go. Yeah. Both like back in the day with the uh, Radiant Silver Gun. Remember when it was like uh, five, six hundred dollars, and then as soon as it dropped on Xbox Arcade, uh, the price of that price disappeared. It was just availability in that case. <laughs> yeah, I don't know anything about the game collecting side of things. I've never really kind of been into that. Well, just just do just do this. Che- uh, go to eBay, put in the name of an old uh, game title that you remember, mm-hmm. and see uh, see what the price is. The collector's editions, yes. You know, I sort of get into that as no, far I mean, as... I mean, Radiant Silver Gun, there was no collector's edition. I know. It was just, it was just the Radiant, game. Just the game yeah, itself. Yeah, it was just the yeah. game. And, it was, and, it had, and it's got value to it afterwards. Yeah. No, exactly. I totally get that. I've just never really been a, a follower of that as far as... Um, I know there are certain titles that kind of hit, you know, a, a like, ooh, this has become now a collector's item. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know that collector's editions can sometimes become collector's items as well as far as the games are concerned right uh i want to say that that first destiny that i've got is probably a collectible of a collector's edition yeah uh the black label castlevania symphony right. of the night yeah That's playstation one. right playstation yeah yeah before greatest hits yeah the black label yeah that goes for a pretty penny oh i'm sure mm-hmm. i'm sure uh well, yeah one of the old ones like that and role-playing games are always 
keep going higher over the years. Wonder why that is. That genre? <laughs> well, not necessarily the genre, but it does seem to me that it's more of the uh I would say the Japanese games that seem to Well imports in general, yeah, because it's they're gonna feature things that will not be uh done in the States. That's that's one thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah especially uh Look up the uh, the uh, the the, uh, the Earthbound on Super Nintendo. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yep. That's I know not about that one. <laughs> no, that makes sense. Uh, I know Earthbound's been one of those. That's one of your. What's one of your really, really? And then of course, there's those games that uh, were only made for like tournament play that people find in you know, uh, you know, uh, like. Uh, flea markets and stuff where it's like this cartridge is only made for the Nintendo World tournaments back in 1980 something or another and there were only three of them made and here's one of them rare yeah, yeah the, rare, the, rare, exactly. the extreme rarity of something so yeah those are the those are the expensive ones ooh, massively expensive ones yeah massively heck even the ones that were offered uh, the demos that are offered in uh, gaming magazines back in the day mm-hmm. that people um, that people still have or um Christmas like uh, Christmas nights. That oh, was yeah. that was something that was offered offered free that was just just out there somewhere. And I use I use yeah. that music for the Christmas show a lot. Uh, yeah. the music from Christmas nights. So yeah, mm-hmm. totally. What was the one from? Um, I forget the I forget the magazine, but they offered like demos. I want to say it was some PlayStation magazine that offered demos of a number of demos on on a disc. Um, Every month or so, something like that. I'm I mean, there were. It it's, yeah. I I know what you're talking about. There were. Yeah. Because uh, I remember, uh, Burnout was one of the Burnouts came on that yeah. disc. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I don't remember what the name of the magazine was. Well, I'm, sorry, I'm trying to think. Wasn't there one that was a demo, but it was never um, fully. I think the the demo came out, but the game was like canceled or was in uh, developers oh, hell or the something. Ga- or... It very much could have been something like a Duke Nukem 3D type thing. Yeah. That eventually did get released, but at the time, here's a demo for it, and then the game never came out. Yeah, um, which made which made that demo disc, yeah, uh, very uh, collectible, very rare. I know one of the other something. big collectibles was, uh, oh man, it was Hideo. Ko- well, it wasn't Hideo Kojima. It was, oh god, I I can't remember. It was you. Were, it was a mech, a mech pilot game type thing. Oh god, I can't remember. <laughs> Was it on the Xbox, the original Xbox? I can't remember, man. It was not. Walking? Walk, walk. No. It was something that uh, I thought Hide- it was Konami and Hideo Kojima had a, had a hand in it. But hmm. I can't remember the name of it. Hmm. Um, Kojima mech title? It's not Xenoblade. No. No. Zone, not Zone of Enders. Maybe it was. It might have been Zone. Um, I don't think Kojima had anything to do with it, but I think the see. demo... Zone of, Zone of Enders, also known as ZOE, is a video game that was developed and published by Konami in 2001 for the PS2. Yeah. Produced by and closely associated with Hideo Kojima. Yes, okay. okay. Thank Zone God I'm Enders. not going crazy. Okay, yeah. That's collectible. Uh, well, notable title that's it worth was something. A, it was very sought after because it had the demo of the game on that. Okay. Right. So it was really, really... People really wanted that... Uh, title to have that on there so uh, it was just a demo that a lot of people wanted that's all you know mm-hmm. whether there's any value in it or not probably not uh thank you super game sniper nine for throwing that out there after me trying to do that and no by the way we have not played Baldur's gate 3 i was up in the air on either getting Baldur's gate 3 cyberpunk or starfield mm-hmm. and i ended up getting uh, all of those except Baldur's Gate 3. <laughs> but Baldur's Gate 3 is on the list of something I really, really want to play. And I'll tell you, um, I've already passed the the point of no return as far as the, the, the Starfield. Uh, I would have easily and should have probably looked into returning that game or, or doing a refund on that game and then jumped over to Baldur's Gate. Not because I don't like the game, but I just don't see myself putting in a lot of time with it at this moment i saw Baldur's gate 3 i saw the gameplay of uh the um battle system yeah and i saw the uh, like it looked like something like is it uh, turn-based it's turn-based isn't it I, I looked at it and i thought about the uh warcraft and league of legends and that type of gameplay and it's never really appealed to me but the story 
does look interesting. There's it's just, just a battle so much. that just didn't really. Um, There's just so much to, to it that I'm curious about, and that I really would. And it's got some great reviews. Unlike you know, you look at the other games that I had mentioned. Like I, I know that Cyberpunk has redeemed itself. Uh, but if you look at Starfield, it started off pretty good, but it's starting to drop a little bit as far as the reviews on this. Mm-hmm. Uh, I guess more and more people are realizing that this ain't. And ain't, this the, the new is worn off. I guess the new is worn off, or mm-hmm. people are really starting to look at it with a more critical eye mm-hmm. and finding you know some issues here and there. I, I still love what I played of it. I just haven't gone any further in it because, I don't know, man, to, uh, Cyberpunk is really holding that grip. Yeah. Um, it is really holding that grip, and I imagine anybody who has, excuse me, Baldur's Gate three, pretty good grip on that as well at mm-hmm. the moment um, for them to go through. And then what? Spider Man just came out. Spider Man two just came out. If you got a PS five, mm-hmm. uh, God, um, Chris, have you played either of those? Uh, Baldur's Gate three or um, uh, I Cyberpunk? He, I don't think he has. I've got Cyberpunk on the PlayStation Four, but I never have used it or touched it. It's still sealed, and uh, mm. but I've I hadn't thought about Baldur's Gate Three. But nope. Yeah, no, I haven't played like that. that either. Yeah. yeah, but is that is that the genre you'd uh, be into though uh, with Baldur's Gate Three? I don't think so. No, not really. Not yeah, really? I yeah. don't think so with them. No. Okay. Nope. But, yeah, I, yeah. Like I said, I think about uh, Warcraft and uh, League of Legends, things like that, and I'm just like. The gameplay, I'm, I'm sure it's uh, enjoyable to a lot of folks. It just hasn't, it just hadn't appealed to me in particular. Right. But the story of Baldur's Gate Three is interesting. It's just the gameplay of it that just doesn't pull me in. It's probably one of those titles that I would look at through a playthrough on YouTube, mm-hmm. or someone would collect all the movie things together and throw some seven, eight hour thing on YouTube, and I'd look at it piece by piece that way yeah but the playing of it would be something I would my be like, god there's already there's, there's already full playthroughs of spider-man 2 on youtube i mean already you no can time. go through yeah. and the, watch yeah. the entire game or at least the cutscenes cut and scenes, everything yeah. else uh all, already right there for that oh and what else came out this week super mario wonder came out this week um mm. uh, it's a new it's a new mario 2d title uh basically side scroller thing okay but Got some really cool uh, mechanics. Got some new new ways of playing type of thing. It just looks really, really cool. I'm very interested in it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not a 3D Mario, so it's not Mario Odyssey, but it is a nice little side scroller mm-hmm. uh, for that. Yes, you get to be an elephant, but there's also little. There's also other things that that take place. Um, there's a there's uh, something called I guess it's called the Wonder Flower. Like it, you kind of you kind of get it's a little trippy whenever you take the wonder flower <laughs> whenever you pick up the wonder flower okay it's an lsd trip it kind of is it really kind of is there's there's just different things that take place uh whenever that happens and it's all or, random what will happen oh well, it's a mystery mystery item yeah exactly okay. you have no idea so how thinking, it's going to affect the gameplay or at least that's what i've heard from reviews but yeah. i was thinking i was thinking more lines of what happens with um like in a uh, mutant league football uh there's a cheat in there where uh, I'm trying to think. What it's called. I think it's called uh, some, uh, something. Strawberry Fields. Oh, I might, might, might be called. It's a cheat item. As soon as you uh, inflict it on the opponent, it's literally a LSD trip. Oh yeah. The, the the colors go random. Everything. The controller's messed up, and uh, it's a little hard to yeah. uh, get from uh, uh, get get first down when you're trying to run sideways when you're supposed to be going forward. Yeah. What I thought yeah. was. In some of the reviews that I saw for this, what I thought was interesting was the fact that uh, you are now playing in what is called the Flower Kingdom mm-hmm. instead of the Mushroom Kingdom. The interesting thing about that, about that is, yeah, there are some, you know, returning flavors of enemies. There's Goombas, there's Koopas, there's all those things. But they've had to come up with completely new enemies since it's set in a completely different area. Uh, and they've done a really good job on that. So your enemy variety is massive only mm-hmm. for the fact that this is something you've never faced before that you know it's mario you stop them they go away right same enemies different shape right exactly but they have different the enemies have different abilities uh there are certain ways that you maybe aren't able to jump on them type of thing you're not able to kill them with a jump uh so you have to be strategic about how you handle them uh just you know jumping over them getting past them using their ability against themselves whatever it may be 
Uh, like there's a rhino that, that will charge at you. You can't jump on the rhino to kill it. You can ride the rhino, though. You can jump on top of it and stay, you know, while it does that. You can direct it towards a cliff, jump out of the way, and he goes off the cliff type thing. So Mm -hmm. there's certain ways to handle that. I like the fact that they had to come up with some fresh new enemies for a Mario game. Uh, Sometimes that can be difficult to do um, because your character does the same thing over and over again. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So, like, how do we we let the player defeat them type of thing? Uh, There's really tall mummies that you can't jump over but when they turn around you can grab one of their bandages and unravel them so there's just certain new ways to to uh to handle enemy stuff in a mario game and i thought that was really cool hey chris Mm -hmm. we're at the top of the hour here we got to run to a commercial break thanks so much for jumping on discord though hope you do it again oh uh there was one other funny videos that uh, they put out that uh, for Diablo 4 for the new season 2 mm-hmm. that uh, they had math equations and they were explaining uh, uh, experience b- boosts and stuff like that and they showed a math formula and they got the answer wrong on it and th- the answer was supposed to be 1400 and they put 1040 on there and they showed the whole formula and couldn't even get the math on it right yeah <laughs> sounds like a that that, that yeah, mess with the uh, destiny. Remember that? I want to say I, I remember reading that in uh, some of my news thing where they had done that, and then they had to go back and uh, change it or something, or you had to pull it. I yeah, believe. somebody yeah. made a reaction video and titled it, you know, Diablo Four Math Hard Pony Fast, and it was him <laughs> just cracking up at it. It was hilarious just listening to him laughing like crazy about it. Yep. Yep. <laughs> All right, Chris. All we'll right, take care, buddy. Later. See you. Hey, take care now. All right, we're going to take yep. a break here. This is music again from the Scarlet Moon uh, Halloween Volume 2. I hope they do this again uh, next year as well. This is from the game Ragnarok Online. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is the theme of Payon, whoever that is. However, the name of this track is called Pumpkins in Payon from Ragnarok Online. We'll be right back with more of in-game chat right after this. And welcome back. Ooh, that's loud. (laughs) Just a little bit. Just a little loud. That is music, and this is still loud. Wow, okay. Sorry. I switched mics, because apparently my mic was putting in a little tone, so I switched the mics up. A bit of interference from that thing. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, this is music from, this is again off of that Scarlet Moon Halloween episode thing, or episode, uh, Halloween album. Mm-hmm. This is from Majora's Mask, Legend of Zelda. It is the Stone Tower Temple, but it is now called the Stone Tower of Terror. And that's where it's from. Welcome back into the show. Jumping over to the news that we had. Nintendo sold one 
new Wii U system in 2023. I don't know where they sold it from. I don't know where uh, uh, Wii U is still available that is, uh, you know, not at a used game store type of thing, but they sold one. Brand new. A brand new Wii U. Mm. Uh, What else do we have? Well, we had those two games. We talked about Spider-Man 2 being released, and we talked about Mario Wonder, and we got a review roundup on those to kind of give you an idea. Uh, Spider-Man 2 is just doing bonkers well as far as reviews are concerned. Um, it's sitting currently at a 93 on Metacritic. Hmm. And that is a, that's where they can, you know, they collect all the different reviews, gives a 93. The user score is an 8.5. But the meta score is a must play 93. It got their must play badge, universal acclaim. Um, what else did they have? Eurogamer, Shack News gave it 100. IGN gave it a 90. So, a lot of good scores for Super Mario Wonder. If you go over to um, Marvel Spider Man 2. I'm not sure what it's sitting at on Metacritic. It is currently at, well, this says 91. Let me look at this. Yep, 91. There are 123 positive reviews of Spider-Man 2. Let me see if I can get a user score. Okay. Universal Acclaim with 91. It is a must play. That's based on 130 reviews. The user score based on 485 users uh, is an 8.8. Still pretty good. IGN gave it a hundred. Hmm. Yeah. Let's see. Some other play. These Games Hub gave it a hundred. Games Radar one hundred. PlayStation Universe a hundred. Screen Rant a hundred. Video Game uh, VGC a hundred. Video Gamer one hundred. VG twenty four seven a hundred. Gaming Nexus a hundred. Shack News, 100. <laughs> Where's our first? Okay, NPR <laughs> gave it a 97. That's uh, still looking good, man. Mm-hmm. A lot of comparisons to, oddly enough, to God of War Ragnarok. Not necessarily, obviously, in the gameplay or sort of thing, but like where they've done a game that was really good, they take a sequel and improve upon it in all the best ways. So... Mm-hmm. Yeah, if you're a story-based game, don't put too much in there that will uh, interrupt the flow of the story. Mm-hmm. That's basically basically what you have to do. You know, what? this feels like a like the health like the health inspector on a a restaurant because you give a hundred to a restaurant, someone's going to follow up behind you and see what you missed. Yeah, I know that's usually how it works for Metacritic yeah. type stuff. It, that was you know we've talked about this. Um, I think it was for The Last of Us and probably a couple of other games that are just. Uh, they do fantastic review wise. Mm -hmm. Everything is way up there. Nobody's out there giving it really bad reviews. And so somebody does because that's the one that's going to get more clicks than anything else. Mm -hmm. If you've got a hundred reviews that are all saying this is the best game, you're likely to click on maybe one or two of those to read what they have to say. Yeah, you don't trust... But, uh, yeah, you but see if there's a whole one, bunch of hundreds, you're like, yeah. sus- you're suspicious. So if there's one reviewer yeah. who gives it a five, all right, let me read his yeah. to see what he's saying. But most of the time, and I'm telling you this now, most of the time, those that skew differently, drastically different mm-hmm. from the majority on something like this, it's usually done with the intent of you clicking on the article and reading it. Mm -hmm. The merit for whatever it may say may not stack up. You'd have to read it to find out. I'm not calling them out because, you know, but nine times out of 10, they're only doing it to get you to click on that thing. Mm -hmm. It's not like you're going to get there and they're going to praise it either. They'll, you know, have their problems with it. But if you read that one, then I suggest you find one of the hundreds, uh, you know, the reviews that give it perfect scores and read one of those. Read both. Yeah take, yeah, take 100 and see why, why, it's, uh, why it's perfect. Yeah. If, I mean, if you're curious, if, if yeah. that's the case. Because um, I'm, I'm thinking yeah. 100, no flaws? It's None good, whatsoever. man. I know it's good, but it's no good. flaws? It probably does have flaws, but um, prob- 
or maybe it's going to be like like you said with Starfield. Starfield had all the uh, all the fanfare at the beginning, mm-hmm. but given time. You'll yeah, see, I don't know. I see something. Uh, probably not on a on a, probably not. not. No, yeah, I'm not saying Spider Man's going to go go, yeah. go go to Starfield route. Just some given time, you'll see something. Yeah, but yeah. But it's 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 reviewing great, and I can't yeah, wait to yeah. play it. So, and I don't know when I'm going to get around to play it. I'm probably waiting for the Black Friday to roll around to see if there's any kind of. It's likely to not get a discount because of because it's a Sony first party title, mm-hmm. and because it just released this. It just released yesterday. Mm-hmm. So it's likely to not get a discount. It might get a very small one, but the timing mm. of the timing of release doesn't really um, it doesn't help hit it. me. It doesn't well, well, doesn't help. I mean, I was about to say it didn't matter because there are some titles that released close to Black Friday and it didn't matter. Still got that discount. But, well, the Assassin's nowadays, Creed, if it's a third party like Assassin's Creed and stuff, like yeah. Mirage, I'm already telling you that thing's gonna. We talked about this. We mm-hmm. you know yeah, we talked. We're about, like yeah. it's gonna it's gonna drop for Black Friday. Mm-hmm. Just how much is it going to drop? We don't know, but it's going to drop for Black Friday. Yeah, the only thing that matters is that uh, for Black Friday is that it's a first party uh, title because how much is Heavenly Sword? It's like still full price. Still full, still full price. Yeah, still full price. Not only that it is um, uh, Nintendo doesn't do theirs Ninten- either. Yeah, Nintendo is, is like if you want to play Mario Wonder, go price. ahead and pick it up now because you're never getting that at a discount until maybe this time next year. And if you do, it'll probably be ten bucks off. Five, maybe. Th- yeah, exactly. Likely five if we're lucky. Ten, mm-hmm. um, but not the kind of discount you would think. You'll you'll be able to pick it up used a lot cheaper. Yeah, um, which may be the way you want to go with that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so. Mario's out, Spider-Man 2's out, but a game that's coming out this week and a game that uh, I was talking to you about that I'm kind of now was excited about, but I'm sort of like, eh. A little skeptical, huh? Yep, that is City Skylines 2, and I hate to say that, but um, everything was looking great, man, and then we heard that the uh, console versions were going to get a delay into next year before they get released, and we're like, well, okay, that's fine, console versions, you got to be very specific as to how you build them and how they're... um, how they're tailored towards that that type of play. Sure, go ahead. PC, we're not in any kind of problem. Apparently, we're in a lot of problems here with uh, City Skylines 2. First off, they're not going to use the Steam Workshop for mod sharing anymore. They're going to use whatever Paradox Interactive has for their mod sharing. Mm-hmm. That I call that a mistake, but I never really used the mods in the first game. But I know a lot of people trust the Steam Workshop for their mods. Mm-hmm. And to just go ahead and say no... We're not going to use that. That kind of raises an eyebrow as to, but why? It's You'd used it for the first one, and it's amazing. Why would you not use it for the second? Mainly because I guess they want it done in their own... DLC? No, not DLC, but their own... Uh, what's the word? Their own, not framework, their own storefront type of thing. Not that you got to pay for it or whatever. It's not going to vary much from what the Steam Workshop does. But the fact that you've already got it established for the first game feels like you should go ahead and do it for the second yeah, for one, the, too. For the first game, yes. But yeah. this is a different... It is. It's a different game. It is a different game. So, that's why I say, that's why I say DLC. To get, you want mods? Get them from us. Yeah. For a small fee. Uh, then they warned players of performance problems. The devs actually said, we have not achieved the benchmark that we targeted, but they are still going to release the game on PC. That seems a little... I mean, I'm glad that they've put that... The fact that they said it. Well, they're putting it out there because I think they're afraid that people are going to play this thing and we're going to get raked over the coals uh, Mm -hmm. if we don't tell these people up front. It's a little bit of a No Man's Sky type of situation where it's like, let's get out in front of this before... It backfires on us. Yeah, I mean, it's like, uh, it had, I was about to say, it did, hadn't stopped other companies before Yeah, from, from doing that. And so, a lot yeah. of the forum posts that I read about are hoping for the No Man's Sky turnaround type of thing with this. Not in the sense, not in the massive sense that No Man's Sky was, mm-hmm. but a turnaround as to where uh, they're like, yeah, look, this is, it's not that great. We don't have it up to snuff yet, but we're going to get there. And they're hoping that the support is going to be there so that they can get it to where it needs to be. Um, but yeah, they uh, seem to be asking, it says, uh, City Skylines 2 devs may as well be asking people not to play it at launch. Um, the games industry's habit of launching broken games and apologizing on the day of the release with a list of known issues and promises to continue working to make things better may have felt like the worst it's going to get, but the industry never stops innovating. 
We're now entering a new era where developers find it okay to advise players that the game they are about to buy may not run well, but that they're going to release it anyway. That is exactly what has happened with City Skylines 2. City Skylines 2 remains one of the most anticipated games, even in a year as stacked as this one. Colossal Order. Um, what did they say? Uh, the statement from developer Colossal Order, Order will probably stop a lot of players from getting the game when it launches next week. Uh, they addressed it on the Paradox Forum saying, As we've always believed in transparency, we'd like to further shed some light on the current state of the build. City Skylines 2 is a next-gen title, and naturally it demands certain hardware requirements. With that said, while our team has worked tirelessly to deliver the best experience possible, we have not achieved the benchmark that we targeted. They explained that despite knowing this, it believes releasing the game now to be the best way forward for the long term of the project. We are proud of the unique gameplay and features in City Skylines 2, and we genuinely believe that it offers a great experience that you will enjoy. The statement ends by reassuring players that the game will be continually improved uh, over the coming months, reiterating that it only wanted to manage expectations on performance for the coming release. They also prepared a FAQ that delves a little deeper. The first question on the list is one everyone is likely going to have after reading this. Why release the game now if you know there are performance issues? Here's their answer. We've taken a long-term version of the pr- vision of the project into account and feel that a release now is the right step. City Skylines 2 features a gameplay that we're very proud of, and despite that, the game is performance-heavy. We believe it will be an experience you will truly appreciate. Um, console versions got delayed to spring of 2024. Uh, so, yeah, it comes out on the 24th, which is next, I think it's when, wait, it was 22nd, 23rd, it was Tuesday. Mm. Uh, that is when City Skylines 2 releases. I was looking forward to it, but more than likely what I'll do is just let uh, people buy this thing and... Yeah. S- See where it gets them. I'm thinking what happens is um, business is business is very very copycat, right? Yeah. And so um, the thing that happened with No Man's Sky, it's possible to release trash at the beginning, and given time and effort, eventually you get it to where it needs to be. Because people, but people stuck with No Man's Sky and for yeah, that time, that's right? True. So. People, uh, companies see it, it can be done, but are you willing to put that much time and effort into it later on to, to get the get the end result that you want? Yeah. So, the lesser of two evils: um, release it unfinished, un unsatisfying, and just keep working on it later, or let it go completely, delay completely on both comp, both uh both uh, platforms, PC and um console that's a, and that's let it a, go from there that's a weird response to give like it's a weird thing to say that hey we're not there but we're going to release it anyway it works that's, for no, that's what i'm saying it worked for no man's sky we can do we're confident we can do the same i mean i think they, they'll get gonna, there they're going to see they're going to use that as an example i'm, I'm figuring they're going to do that down the line the thing yeah the thing about uh, city skylines and colossal order in general is that that dev studio supported the hell out of that first game the massive number of updates add-ons d i mean there was dlc sure yeah and it was paid dlc sometimes it was free dlc Mm -hmm. but it was a ton of dlc um and not all of it was something that you absolutely had to have but it was there in case you wanted do you want seasons in your city there's dlc for that do you want specific college campuses and by college i mean mostly university campuses because it's overseas uh then yeah you know different things like that stadiums for sports and all these other sort of things that they added into it tons and tons of stuff uh that they did for the first game if they put in that effort for this one i think they'll be fine but i'm not gonna start playing a broken game and and this is not a game that I sit down and I play one day and I'm good, and then I go back and I finish up down the line. These are games that don't ever end. But I'm not going to start on a build for a city that's right. going to be as massive as it is on a game that is broken. Yeah, I mean, this the No Man's Sky um, um, method, I guess you want to call it, it's not going to do uh, wonders for your sales. 
because now, especially with the statement you said, you know what you're getting into. Yeah. So it's best to the best thing to do is wait. Of yeah. course, it's go, you're going to be to wait. So I guess for an event, I, I'll give them, I don't know, did it for investors or whatever. But yeah, the best thing to do is wait and uh, wait and see. But like I said, what's the lesser two evils? Putting it out now and hoping to get recoup as much as you can, or putting it on the back burner and losing a lot of um, possible yeah. uh, income from from the shutting it down until you, until you get it all right. The IGN review for uh, City Skylines 2 wasn't that great. They were talking about, uh, here's all the problems, here's what it's, here's the struggles that it has right now, and here's some of the good things about it, that sort of thing. Um, they were very they were very deliberate in saying that there are bad aspects to the game, but it's not a bad game. Uh, but given everything that I was seeing in that, that, that review video and, and listening to him talk about it, I mean, he gave the game a six, I believe. Um, it still was something where it's like, I don't know if it's there yet. I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's there for me yet. And yeah. I was really hoping it would be because I was looking forward to it. But yeah, I but, yeah, don't know but now. if you if you look at it, yeah, the best thing to do is uh, is wait. wait. Look, and, look, you got you got plenty of things to keep. I was about to say, I don't. Yeah. It's not like I'm out of games, <laughs> yeah. man. Yeah, it's not ba- like I'm out of games. The backlog is still there. And not getting yeah. it now means that I can put that money towards. Getting Spider-Man 2 or picking up Talos 2 whenever that releases in next Lot, year. Lies of P in my case. Right. You yeah. can, you're picking that up? Yeah, or do you already Okay. Eventually I'm going to pick it up. I bet that'll get a, a Black Friday discount too. Yeah, you should. I don't know, but I imagine it will yeah. of some sort. Mm-hmm. Don't know the price, but I, I think it will. I think you're absolutely right. So, yeah, I was really, uh, in fact, it reached, uh, we just saw that. It reached $1 million in sales in under a month. Mm-hmm. Liza P. did. So good job on it. All right. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we will finish off the news, maybe talk about that King Kong game. It was really, really bad. But there's a reason it was really, really bad is because it's a game publisher that puts out really bad games as quickly as possible. Track record. Uh, very much so. Uh, and a lot of other stuff coming up here. As far as news is concerned, coming up on Endgame Chat, we're going back to our Uh, Scarlet Moon soundtrack here. This comes from The Secret of Mana. Uh, It is called Ceremony. That is the name of it. We'll be right back with more of in-game chat right after this. Welcome back to in-game chats. This track is called Regret, but I don't see any game related to it. Everything else has some sort of game relation, but this one does not. Just is called Regret. It's an original. Okay, there we go. The debut of a new artist with Scarlet Moon, Nami Nakagawa. And this is an original work and an original song titled Regret. So, yeah. Boss music. Yeah, it does have a feeling of that, doesn't it? Yeah. Anyway, welcome back to the show. 
Back into the news that we were talking about. We're going to leave off. We're going to talk about, let's see, the most played demos of the Steam Next Fest, which were some really good demos. But the most played uh, happened to be, I guess, I don't know if this is in order or not, uh, Enshrouded, which I should have gone to, Japanese Drift Master, Sky Children of Light, which we talked about, uh, Deep Rock Galactic Survivor, Robocop Rogue City, Foundry, Pioneers of Pagonia, we talked about that. Apocalypse Party, The Last Faith, um, Headbangers, Rhythm Royale, Last Train Home, Love is All Around, Ghost Runner 2, let's see, Quantum Knights, Ascent of Ashes, Crime Scene Cleaner, Cooking Simulator 2, Anomaly Agent, Talos Principle 2 got in there. The, excuse me, the Age Through Blood, the Leica Age Through Blood thing that got in there as well. So, I don't know what everybody else played on the Steam Next Fest, but there you go. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, Embracer Group, looks like they're doing layoffs at Cryptic Studios... And sadly, Zen Studios. Hmm. Uh, spotted by Twitter user and reported by Game World Observer, it appears the latest to be affected by layoffs with an embracer group and the video game industry in general are Cryptic and Zen. Uh, Cryptic Studios rose to prominence with the development of City of Heroes. Ha <laughs> man, that was my first MMO. Mm-hmm. City O Heroes was my first MMO. Good time with all of them, man. Wasn't it? Yep. Oh, uh, boy. Old City Heroes. I'd forgotten that that was actually done by Cryptic, but uh, yeah. Um, they're doing Champions Online, Star Trek Online, and Neverwinter right now. Zen Studios, who did Zen Pinball, Pinball FX, uh, got layoffs there. So uh, I don't exactly know who got laid off or what it might have been, but that's I always hate that. Especially with studios that uh, that I enjoy their product with. Of course, I haven't played a... First off, I haven't played City of Heroes in forever. Um, mm. In fact, you can't because it's, it was done. Uh, a, a group of online folks, or whatever, they, they got the code and brought it back. Um, and have been doing things with it. I got into a little bit of it. You had to go so far around everything just to get the thing to run. Uh, so many different things you had to do to get this game to run. And I was able to do that and spend, you know, the majority of the time in the character creation because that was really what that was all about. Mm -hmm. uh, great game, but the character creator, fantastic. One of the best character creators I've ever uh, been introduced to. I, I, I don't, there's not, I can't even think of something that comes close to it. It was just so really well done and just so good. Um, but yeah, they, they brought that back, but really it was only so I could create a new character and go through the character creation setting. Um, Zen, of course, pinball. I haven't played any of the Zen Studios pinball stuff in a long time, much less, I mean, I've got a bunch of their stuff, but have I bought anything new from them? No. It's been a minute. It has been a long while before I've done that. Not because I've fallen out of faith with pinball or fallen out of love with pinball or anything like that, but... Zen kept, they kept redoing the way that they do their, their system and it was annoying and I kept having to rebuy tables and I just got fed up with it when they asked me to do it a third time. Yeah. I said, I, I know I'm not doing it, man. You guys want to send me codes that can transfer all that stuff? I'll be, I'll, I'll pay a very small fee in order to transfer that. If you'd like, mm -hmm. I would easily do that, but to rebuy all the tables that I own. No, not doing that. Just not doing that. Some things you'll double dip, but not that. Well, I mean, I've already double dipped. I went from yeah. Pinball FX to Pinball FX 2. Mm -hmm. I double dipped. Um, and so, yeah, I'm okay, not going to do it a third time. Yeah. The reason it was easier to go from 1 to 2 because I didn't have as many tables at that time. Mm -hmm. But they stuck with 2 for a long time. Many, many years of Pinball FX 2. And I amassed a, a good amount of tables oh i was also getting review code for these tables as well mm -hmm. so yeah um 
I would very much like to transfer those. I know AC Wraith says this time it's supposed to be for good since it's all in their system. I get it, man. But I don't trust it. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, sure, this time, right? Like, not I'm not getting back into that abusive relationship. Like, this time you're going to, nope, not doing it. Uh, I would, yeah, that's fine. I will wait uh, and, and see how that plays out. But I'm good. I'm good. What else do we have? Starfield was the best-selling game of September in the United States. And that did not matter if, you're, if you include Game Pass in sales or if you don't. If yeah. you include Game Pass in sales, it was still the best-selling game. If you remove Game Pass altogether, still the still best-selling game. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So it didn't matter if uh, it was uh, on Game Pass or not. Hmm. Um, Let's see, what is it? AC Wraith says uh, Zen Studios gave Steam discounts for previous owners of tables in 3, but many of us got those tables um, from 2, and the Steam store doesn't recognize the purchase. Wow. Yeah. It was annoying. This is, that's why I kind of stepped back from that. Yeah. I was like, I'm tired of dealing with this. I'm just going to stick with Pinball FX 2. And I'm happy with what you've done there. Yeah. We ignore we ignore your purchase because you didn't get it from I us. just man. one of those things, man. Just one of those things. Uh, and I hope maybe one day though it'll it'll get down to where it's like here you can buy all these tables for this price, whatever. Boom, you know. And it's on a Steam sale, and maybe I pay the price of like fifty bucks, and I get every single table, mm -hmm. you know. And I mean every table, not just the tables that I previously owned, but all the new stuff that they've done too. I mean the Indiana Jones table that I really really want is fifteen dollars. You used to get you used to pay fifteen dollars and get like three or four tables in a pack, not yeah. just one table, but it's a recreation of a licensed table with a licensed property, and it's fifty and they know it. They know it too. They're like, This is the indie game, man. People are gonna people are gonna buy this. So let's let's get that price, price up. up. Fifteen bucks, buddy. The indie table, the Batman table, the Superman table, the whatever the yeah, whatever well known well known intellectual property yeah, table. No. Yeah. Uh, well, it's it's the recreation of an actual table. Yeah. Uh, the table that we used to have in the movie theater when I was working there, the uh, Indiana Jones three movie table. Oh. Um, so, so so the nostalgia factor kicked in. Oh, it's for, for me a yeah. big nostalgia factor. Yeah. Because when I was working at the theater during in between movies and stuff, I'm going down there. Yeah. And there was a little trick to it too. This is in the this is in the theater lobby. And we had we had uh, the tables would would come in and out. So we had. Uh, usually two pinball machines, and we would always talk to the guys, who, the the Franco guys. Franco ain't around anymore, but uh, the Franco guys who would come and move these out were like Just pinball. But yeah, we we like your the the zombie shoot game that you've got up here, and the Mortal Kombat's, and we're okay with those. But and keep those there, and all the Miss Pac Man Galaga, keep that there. Um, but you know, let's let put some more pinball machines in here. Hmm. So we got the taxi pinball machine. We got the. Uh, uh, I think it was High Speed 2. The Chase uh, was the other one. Some setting on that thing made the idle music as loud as possible. And the idle music was just the riff of LaGrange over and over again. Just that opening riff of LaGrange. Mm -hmm. Not the vocals, just that opening little riff of LaGrange. Mm. Ding, ding. Over, 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 but as loud as possible, as in loud enough to interrupt the folks in the theater. Not in the theater, no, but okay. it, it would drown out any kind of conversation in the lobby. It was annoying. <laughs> um, you'd have to go over there and smack the uh, flipper button so it would change whatever's on the screen, and then it would, you know, go away mm -hmm. and go through high scores and stuff like yeah. that. Uh, but uh, what was one of the other tables? The Indiana Jones table, mm -hmm. and there was a little trick with that table where. If you took the, so, you know, take your hand, uh, hold your hand up like you're, you're, you know, you're swearing an oath, then take your hand and turn it so the fingers are pointing down. So, you know, palm, palm up type thing. Mm -hmm. And you would smack <laughs> the coin insert thing. Mm -hmm. Not, not like damaging hard. You just have to get a little tink. Yeah. And that would click as a credit 
Yeah. It the, would uh, move the it would move needle, whatever was inside. The, move the needle that registers that a coin fell through. To give it a coin. Would, uh, yeah. Yep. Would say that it, and so we just passed, like, Duke, because so yeah. you didn't want to tilt the table, but you but pop that in there and you'd mm-hmm. get a free credit in. Yeah. And so we'd sit there and play that game so much, which is why it's got a little bit of a, first off, it's Indiana Jones. I love that stuff. But it's also got that factor of it's one of the early pinball machines that I that I played to play pinball with. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, between 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 uh, uh, presentations, you got about ninety minutes, two hours to take. You know? Depending on how we've lined it up, yeah, you yeah. could have some good times. Otherwise, you had like I'm going to start this one and immediately have to go through and start them all. But then you've only got usually, especially this is back when movie theaters had a lot of movies in them, um, and usually at least one screen was showing something for kids, and that is only about ninety minutes. <laughs> that's only about 90 minutes yeah uh so yeah you could time it pretty good oh man good, good times, times. <laughs> total good times man mm-hmm. oh god what else uh yeah there was a king kong game that was released and uh it was horrible uh you can look at youtube video of this king kong game it is bad skull island rise of kong was released this week Uh, And was quickly described as one of the worst games of 2023. Um, It was the first King Kong video game in nearly 20 years. Uh, The last one being that Peter Jackson King Kong based on the movie Mm -hmm. that Peter Jackson did uh, from Ubisoft. Um it's the publisher, apparently, in a report from The Verge, developers from Iguana B, a small indie studio based in Santiago, Chile, spoke anonymously and explained that Skull Island's publisher, Game Mill, gave the team only one year to develop the game from scratch. The development process of this game was started in June of 2022, and it was aimed to end on June 2nd of 2023, said one of the developers. Uh, Games Mill has not given any comment on this. They're a U.S. publisher of many not-so-great video games. Frequently, they use smaller teams of developers to create licensed video games in very short amount, short amount of time. Um, Iguana B claimed that Game Mill would not provide the team with all the information about the product, so they had to improvise on things. They're like, okay, it's a King Kong game, and he's got to battle other monsters. Y'all go make it. <laughs> okay. So they had to figure it out from there. <laughs> Uh, other complaints suggest that Game Mill wasn't willing to provide enough money for Iguana B to maintain a large, skilled staff of developers. Sources tell The Verge that for most of Skull Island's development, only around 2 to 20 people were working on it. As you might expect, at least one developer reported that crunch happened, and it was bad. The crunch was really set in motion in February, said the anonymous developer. I was on automatic pilot by the end of February because all hope was lost. <laughs> Even though developing the game was tough and the money wasn't great, according to The Verge, some folks on the team still take pride in what they were able to ship in such a short amount of time under those difficult circumstances, with one former dev sharing on social media that they were still proud of the King Kong game. Uh, And you know what? Sure, go ahead. You had a year to develop a game, and you actually succeeded, and it got out there, and it's getting plenty of bad press but press all the but same. But still press. I mean, I, we just talked about it on the radio. Yeah. Silver liner. Hey, you, they uh, given all these circumstances and you still got this thing released? Yeah. Jeez. I, it sounds like that phrase, uh, they had, the company had champagne taste with uh, beer money. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good quote. I mean, that's exactly uh, a good quote and a good way to relate to it. Exactly. Uh, let's see. When is Awesome Games done quick? Because for the first time ever, Awesome Games done quick. And by the way, Awesome Games done quick. There's also Summer Games done quick. Uh, Maybe there's Winter Games done quick. I'm not sure. Uh, But it's a charity thing. And they host a full weekend of speedrunners going through games as fast as they possibly can. Whether it be by glitching the game or by playing it straight, whatever the case may be, they do speed runs of games and they raise money for charity. Hmm. It's a, it's a, and it's an amazing thing. They stream everything. You get to watch these people speed run games that are just amazing. Well, for the first time ever, uh, a dog 
is going to do a speed run. On Tuesday, speedrunner JSR announced in a YouTube video that his dog, Peanut Butter, <laughs> will play Gyromite in January at Awesome Games Done Quick. It's a puzzle, puzzle action game on the NES. All Peanut Butter will have to do is follow his owner's command and press cl- colored platforms on a custom-built controller that opens and closes gates and moves platforms. Peanut Butter's task in Gyromite, in the Gyromite run is to basically take the place of the uh, Rob the Robot. You remember that for the NES? Yeah. Yeah. He basically takes the place of Rob that shipped with certain versions of the Nintendo Entertainment System in 1985. Um, basically, he'll be the second player who would assist gamers in playing the two games, uh, the accessories, uh, the accessory supported Gyromite and Stack Up. Um, Except he's a dog, and he's going to have to respond to his owner's commands on how to do that. So it's not apparently his first time. Back in July, the speedrunner op- uploaded a video of Peanut Butter's first speedrun attempt. It took him 25 minutes and 29 seconds to beat the game. I've never beaten Gyromite. I have no idea what it takes to beat Gyromite. I've never actually played Gyromite. I watched it played once. I've seen it played. At a, at a buddy of mine's house, and uh, I was more concerned if the uh, Rob the Robot would work properly than right, yeah. looking at the screen of uh, the game itself. I really, I, I will look forward to seeing that, but old Peanut Butter going to play him a video game. Well. And, uh, yeah. Well. Do it pretty good. Yeah. It reminds me of uh, the blind Street Fighter guy. Yeah. Is it Street Fighter? Or just fighter games? Well, I think it was Street Fighter. I think it was Street Fighter, yeah. Because Street well, Fighter has certain, or there's certain ways that Street Fighter has a, a mode in there that can help him tell which something. side he's looking at, or which side his character is on the screen in relation to where his opponent is. No, I no, thought. I don't know, but uh, yeah, uh, there was a guy playing uh, uh, a Street Fighter blindfolded. I forget his name, but uh, what was the dog? What was the dog did? Uh, did a fire, did fireballs in Street Fighter? What? Uh, dog, um, I don't know if it was real or not. But the dog uh, was like uh, pla- uh, hit something on the uh, on the stick. Oh yeah, on a fight stick. Got an EX fireball off in Street Fighter Four. Somehow, just miraculously, <laughs> yeah. was able yeah. to pull one off. Yeah, people were just immediately like uh, fake, not real, but um, possible. Very possible. So Very he, possible. He, the, the snout of his nose hit the stick, and he slapped buttons and did something. Yeah. Or I'm thinking uh, it was uh, Maximilian dude. Mm-hmm. Uh, his uh, Benny before he passed, he, he was like uh, he was like uh, barking at something on the screen, and uh, he was controlling R Mika at the time on Street Fighter, and he was and inadvertently started charging up um, Mika's taunt. And if you let Mika's taunt go full all the way, her next throw will be an instant knockout. Oh, okay. Yeah, so if you let it charge all the way through. So if you let her sit there and uh, taunt her, do her entire taunt, you deserve to get knocked out hmm. if you get caught. But, because it uh, takes so long to get through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember some of the wrestling games would have that. Mm-hmm. Uh, some of their fight, your fighting games would have, uh, well, I say your fighting, but your wrestling games, especially mm-hmm. your wrestling games, your NWA versus WCW, that sort of thing. Um all your wrestlers would have taunts. Some would be very long, and some would be. But if you pulled them off, yeah, it helped. Like if you could get through a taunt before mm-hmm. you got attacked, it was a big, it was a big plus in your column. So yeah, but you're pulling um, out the ring, start taunting. Yeah, exa- that was yeah, totally. You would have to get them out of the ring and then go as far away from them as you could, mm-hmm. <laughs> so you could do the taunt, and it would take them forever to crawl back into the ring and then run over to get you. Yeah, yeah I remember. Yep, God. Um. So yeah, there's that, and I guess I guess that would be it. I was that was talking about Gyromite made me think uh, I really need to work on my retro games, as far as kind of organizing them together and work on getting them you know set for when I either put them on my Steam Deck or I just build whatever to uh, to be able to play them where and whenever I want mm-hmm. type of thing. Something that can hook up to where I can play it on anything that I wanted to play it yeah. on. In my case, I just got the um, old system. 
<laughs> to play. Yeah, Mons, there's so, yeah. that. There's ease. There's that is the way to go, honestly. But I would love yeah, just the t- something the that's don't just get. the TV. The TVs are too advanced for the system now. That I think there's hookups yeah. there for it now. The yeah. the H that was the uh, RF to HDMI converter or something like that. No, yeah. yeah, some, some companies uh, sell something like that. I'm pretty sure. Uh, some a friend of mine was talking about it, but yeah, because um, the last thing I played my Genesis on was a RF RF uh, setup. Yeah, but now all I got is HDMI. So I know that's all we all have. Yeah, so uh, for the most now part, what? So I still have a receiver. I think that's got some not RFs, but they've got RCA jacks. Yeah, you know um, your video and audio jacks in the back mm-hmm. that might be helpful in that. I think I haven't looked at the back of that receiver in forever. But mm-hmm. I think it's old enough to where it still had that in there. Yep. Um, so, yeah, I'll look into that. But, yeah, I think I want to work on that. Or at least maybe start looking at the titles I want to download and, you know, have. Yeah, preserve, yeah. Have, yeah, have, and have, have what I can have there. So might look into that. Anyway, we're getting to the end of the show. There was some other stuff about what's going to happen with the Switch successor and how they'll try, how Nintendo will try and make your transfer of an account easier to do. And I hope so, because I will say going from the OLED switch to going from the old switch to the OLED switch was not a problem until I needed to move my Animal Crossing uh, island. Yeah. That was a little different. So I'll be more prepared for whenever that has to happen. But what has to happen now is we've got to go. That is going to wrap it up for us. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. We really do appreciate it. Um, you know, don't forget to grab our show from iTunes. It's going to go up tomorrow morning. It'll go up on YouTube tomorrow morning as well. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, join our Discord. People talking in there all the time. And, uh, you know, kind of use it like a forum if you'd like to. Uh, don't forget Twitch. Subscribe to us there. And we're going to leave you here with more music from the Scarlet Moon album here. This is called 16 Bells. And it's from Final Fantasy 16. So have a great one and uh, we'll see you next Saturday.